Coyote Moon, written by Beth Costanzo. The Adventures of Scuba Jack. Copyright 2020 by Beth Costanzo. All rights reserved. Andrew looked out his kitchen window while washing the dishes. He looked at the large machinery standing where the tall pines once grew. Piles of logs lay stacked as high as the sky. The smell of freshly cut wood filled the air. In a corner of the demolition was a quiet, small cave. A week earlier, a mama coyote and her babies lived along with the other creatures happy and playful in the forest. The day the humans came, nothing was ever the same. The mother coyote and her babies were taken away to live in a sanctuary, except for one baby that remained. He was the smallest of the litter, and much slower too. Night fell upon the once lively forest. The February snow moon raised high in the sky and cast a light upon the land. The snow gently fell on the little pup as he howled loudly at the moon. He called out to his family, but got no reply. Again he howled, and this time heard rustling farther down a road. The noise came closer and closer until he spotted a large black dog. The dog slowly walked closer, sniffing the leaves on the ground until he finally reached the pup. The dog gently picked up the pup by the back of the neck and started to carry him home. The small pup knew he wasn't strong enough to defend himself and went along with the large dog's plan. As they walked down the road, the moon seemed larger and more beautiful than it was earlier. The air was crisp and the footprints of a rabbit were seen in the newly fallen snow. The pup saw the light of a small cabin in the distance. He knew this was going to be his new home and family. The dog placed the puppy gently on the porch. He jumped up on the scratched wooden door and started barking loudly. Suddenly, the door opened and an old man looked down at the pup. Maska. What did you bring home today? asked Andrew. Masca was Andrew's dog. He was a large black Labrador retriever. Where is your mother, little one? politely asked Andrew. He bent down to pat the pup. But the small coyote growled at the old man. Andrew was of Native American descent and knew to keep his distance or suffer the consequences of a painful bite. Your mother taught you well and showed you how to defend yourself. You must be hungry. Andrew opened a can and put some dog food in a bowl. Here you go, he said. Andrew shut the gate to his porch and went inside with the black Labrador. The coyote pup began to howl. This went on for about an hour until the pup made his way over to a dog bed and fell asleep. Six weeks passed and Andrew went out every day to feed the pup. Each day he bent over and stuck out his hand so the coyote could smell it. Finally, it worked and the coyote didn't growl. I'm going to name you Kitchi. It means brave in Native American, said Andrew. He brought the coyote and Masca inside for a nap. He placed some logs in the fireplace and they all fell fast asleep. Suddenly, Andrew was awakened by the young coyote. He was scratching at the front door and wanted to go outside. Andrew opened the door and the coyote started howling. The moon raised high in the sky and cast a light over the land. The snow gently fell upon the coyote as he howled into the twinkling night sky. He was calling out to his family, and this time he heard something. He howled again and heard another howl in the distance. Andrew, too, heard the howls and excitedly got up to look out the window. The young coyote pushed open the porch gate and ran to the side yard. 
There, waiting for him, was a much larger male coyote. The two began to jump up and down. It was obvious they both knew each other. His father came back, Maska, said Andrew. Look at how happy they are together. The young coyote saw Andrew looking at him through the window. The coyote looked at Andrew as if to say, Thank you for saving me. The father coyote also looked with gratitude in his eyes as they both walked into the forest together. Andrew had tears in his eyes. He knew he would never see the coyotes again. Their home was destroyed and they needed to move deeper into the forest. The young coyote belonged with his father, living, playing, hunting, and being free and wild in nature. Visit us at www.adventuresofscubajack.com.